Welcome everybody to our next live stream. We are going to be going over the very unusual warning from the IMF and actually calling out for once uh, Joe Biden. The IMF and all the three-letter organizations previously loved Joe Biden, but now what he's done, uh, people can't cover it up any longer. He's done so poorly, he's performed so bad that they can't hide it anymore, and they've now actually put out a huge warning to say if Biden and his administration keep on going down this road they're going down and keep on doing what they're doing, uh, there's going to be some massive, massive risks, not just for the US, but for the whole global economy. Now, can I please just get a one? Look, I didn't even have to ask you guys uh, Alex and Jake already putting one in the chat to say that the mic is working well. You guys already know the routine here. So thank you for that. All right, fantastic. So we've got some huge news to cover today. Also, the Federal Reserve has came out and admitted that, you know, very early in the, in the year, they're saying, look, guys, we have this inflation now. We've won the war on inflation. Uh, now they're having to swallow their words, go back on their words and saying, nope. Uh, actually, inflation is accelerating, and there may not actually be any rate cuts in 2024. There may actually even be rate hikes. So what is this warning? And we've got some very uh, interesting statistics to prove that the Biden's fiscal uh, sustainability is not sustainable at all. So let's get straight into it, everyone. Look at this. IMF warns Biden's fiscal uh, proficiency posed significant risk to global economy in the great election year. And it's not just election year for the United States. There's many countries that are holding an election this year. So what exactly did they say? Well, the IMF said that the quiet, said the quiet part out loud, admittedly wrapped up in 100s of pages of a PhD essay in their benchmark fiscal monitor this morning, pointing out that America's recent economic performance is particularly the result of the country's unsustainable borrowing. So that's exactly right, everyone. While according to the manipulated numbers, the uh, US economy is growing, that's because of inflation. So if you factor in inflation, it'd actually be going backwards, also because of record immigration, both legal and illegal immigration. That's the only reason why using their models, according to them, the US economy is growing. But if you look on a per individual basis, on a per capita basis, look down to the average American, they've actually never been more worse off. And that the US massive fiscal deficits, uh, deficits have stroke inflation and pose significant risk for the global economy. That's exactly right. We've had the Federal Reserve try to lift interest rates to stop inflation, but then you have the government, the Biden administration, on the other hand, they're still spending like crazy, taking on $1 trillion worth of debt every 100 days, and they're doing the opposite. That's the reason why inflation isn't going away. They're saying, oh, it's the America's consumer's fault. It's the consumer's fault. You're the problem. The reason why uh, inflation is not going down. They've tried to gaslight uh, the US population to say, you're the reason why it's not going down when really it's the American government's uh, unprecedented spending. Uh, it says here, the exceptional recent performance of the United States is certainly impressive and a major driver of global growth, but we're about to go into a chart. I'll show you a chart in a moment why they're also going to be the global downfall. But it reflects strong demand factors as well as including a fiscal stance that is out of line with long-term fiscal sustainability. That's right, everyone. This is unsustainable. You know, it took the US hundreds of years to get in their first trillion dollars of debt. Now that, you know, it's going to become every month they're going to add a trillion dollars to the debt. The IMF wrote in its latest World Economic Outlook they added that fiscal policy developments in major economies, notably in the United States, have implications for global financing conditions. That's exactly right. And if they keep on taking on so much debt and keep issuing more and more bonds and the bond market crashes, interest rates will spike. But let's keep reading. It gets much more interesting, people. The IMS said that the US has exhibited remarkably large fiscal slippages with uh, the fiscal deficit hitting 8.8% of GDP last year. Did you hear that, everyone? 8.8% deficit of GDP. 
This is why the economy is growing. The Biden administration is literally looting the population. He's spending so much just to try to make it look like there's a little bit of growth in the US economy. He's flooding the country with illegal immigration uh, to try to tell them to, look, vote for Biden administration. He's destroying the country just in order to get re-elected. It's crazy how far we've let politicians destroy the country just in order to win an election and something needs to change quick. Otherwise, it will be the downfall of the great US empire. Also, it's Inflation Reduction Act. It seems like it's done the opposite. The Inflation Acceleration Act has contributed to 0.5% points to core inflation, and I think it's much higher. So who could have seen that coming? Um, I'm pretty sure all of you guys uh, in the comments could have seen uh, this coming. Uh, just type one in the chat. Uh, thanks for that. I'll also bring up the chat uh, on the side here. I think we all saw this coming. Anyone that had a uh, half a brain and common sense uh, could have seen this coming. So let's go to this chart here. Now, the fund further said its fiscal monitor report that expected the US to record a deficit of 7.1% next year, more than three times the average of other advanced economies. And Stephen Morris, uh, thanks for that uh, super chat. So three times uh, than the advanced economy. It also raised concerns uh, the Chinese government debt as Beijing copes with weak demand and housing crisis. And that's exactly right, everyone. You've got here the th three biggest economies. India's not you know, up there, but they are getting up there. US, China, India. The only reason they're growing is because they're taking on huge amounts of debt. And uh, that means once they can't take on any more debt because eventually you get maxed out, the global economy is going to fall off a cliff. And you say, well, yes, they can just take on as much debt as they want. Well, yes, they can, but like I said, that will destroy their currency. So there's no, there's no good way out of this. It's either they stop taking on debt and crash the economy or keep on printing currency and create hyperinflation. So it says here, the US and China were among four countries that named uh, the fund named critically uh, need to take policy actions to address fundamental imbalances between spending and revenues. And uh, well, if they do that, like I said, if the two biggest economies stop spending, the whole economy will fall off a cliff. The others were UK and Italy. So they said rampant spending by US in, and China in particular could have profound effects for the global economy and pose significant risks for baseline fiscal projections in other economies, the uh, IMF said. Furthermore, the IMF rather too honestly noted that things could get even worse as it's a massive election year. And uh, like we spoke about, politicians like to spend money. They don't have to buy votes. That's right. They will bankrupt the, com the country just to buy a few more votes, which is really unfortunate and something needs to change where politicians can't just you know there should be a limit on how much of a deficit politicians should have because they're using this system now over the past few decades to buy votes but it's destroying major economies like the us uk australia europe etc that's our translation of their findings that deficits in elections year tend to exceed forecasts by 0.4 percentage points of GDP compared to non-election years. The risk of fiscal slippages are particularly acute given that 2024 is being called the great election year. I don't know about you everyone, but do you feel like this election has never been more important? We've seen the US economy uh, fall off a cliff under this administration, or should I say the past four years. We've got record inflation and we've got the uh, globe falling into war. The world has never been more unsafe. Uh, it's never been more unstable under the Biden administration because the the East doesn't take Biden seriously. They're not afraid of Biden. Um, you saw what happened when they were saying, what do you have to say about Iran potentially attacking Israel? And Biden was just like, don't do it, don't do it. And uh, Iran's like, yeah, you don't scare me, mate. We're going to do it. And it's quite crazy in my mind. How can a man that can't put two words together, can't put a sentence together, 
be in charge of the most powerful, the biggest and greatest economy in the world. How have we got to this point, people, where someone is taking 52 vacations a year is in charge of one of the greatest empires of all? This will be the downfall uh, of the West by letting these politicians destroy our countries. And something needs to change quick. And I hope and pray that it does change quick with this election in 2024. And I think that's why it'll be so important because I think you and me have had enough and a lot of people have had enough. We've seen that these policies they've tried to put in to be, you know, progressive, they've not worked, okay? And there needs to be some real action now. They also said support for increased government spending has grown across the political spectrum over the past several decades, making this year especially challenging as uh, empirical evidence shows that fiscal policy tends to be looser and slippages larger during election years. So finally, what does this all simply mean? They note that the IMF chief economist um, warned that US fiscal positions uh, was of particular concern, suggesting it could complicate the Fed's attempt to return its inflation to its 2% goal. It raises short-term risk to disinflation process as well as longer fiscal and financial stability risk for the global economy. And we got this out. Powell, um, geez, all these ads here. Uh, Powell says restrictive rates policy needs more time to work. Well, what really needs to happen, everyone? He hasn't got the picture here. And I've been warning you, I don't think the Federal Reserve is going to do anything to stop inflation because they don't want to be seen as interfering in the election. And also because if the Federal Reserve lifted interest rates to what they need to be, 6% at least, uh, we would see the US government potentially default. Okay, People think they can't default. What's well, either a default or print the dollar until it becomes worthless. Like I said, there's no easy way out of this. So we are in some real troubled times. And the reason why it is so bad now is because over the past three global financial crises, did they fix the problem? No, they simply printed money and covered up the problem. They kicked the can down the road. But we've been hearing this narrative of kicking the can down the road for four decades. Eventually, the road comes to the end. Eventually, the road leads to a cliff and we drop off the cliff unless they take a huge U-turn and huge action. And now is the time for huge action and a huge U-turn. So everyone, I know what you're thinking. Well, okay, things are really bad. Well, what can we do? Well, I've been warning you guys for two years now. You need to first get your finances in order. Pay off as much as you can because interest rates are only going to go up. You need to find ways to diversify income, not just one income stream. If you know, you're know you working a job right now, try to find a way to start a side hustle. I wish there was a simple solution like buy this meme stock and then you'll turn 1000 into a million dollars. That's gambling people. That's not a real solution. Pay off debt. Find a way to start a side hustle, some kind of business. I can't tell you exactly which one to do. I do YouTube. Maybe you want to do YouTube, but you may have a specific skill. Maybe you're a baker. Maybe you're really good at making cakes. Find out whatever skill you have, trying to find a way to turn that into a side hustle. Then you want to have food. Find a way to have self-sustainable food because food is going to get very expensive. You saw what happened to eggs uh, last year. Yes, eggs went up through the roof. People that uh, had had their own chickens and you know uh, got their own eggs, they didn't have to worry about that. And you want to have gold because I think gold is going to go through the roof. But I also have to be real. Not a lot of you can afford to buy 10 ounces of gold. Not, a, not all of you have $25,000 lying around there or $250,000 to put into gold. So if you don't, the best thing you can do right now, pay off debt. You need to find a way to increase your income because you know a lot of financial gurus say just live cheaply. Well, just the cost to survive now is extraordinary. Just Even if you just, just have a roof over your head, pay utilities, um, and have food on the table, people can't cut, cut back anymore. So you need to find ways to increase your income. Once you've done that, be more self-sustainable and uh, you will be okay. And you got this. You can do it, everyone. I believe in you. So what do you guys think about this? Huge risk for the global economy. Biden administration is looting the population just in order to try to get a few more votes. Let me know your thoughts below. You're awesome. I'll see you all in the next video.